yogis and welcome to our practice on backbending which is meant to follow the fifth class of the beginners course. Um, so backbending postures you could also call you know, front body opening postures and there's often quite a love-hate relationship with backbending postures. Some people will naturally be huge backbendy kind of people and they will really really love them for a while and then often what tends to happen is if you're too backbendy you take it too far then you sort of start to experience maybe a little bit more pain and they become less of your favourites and then other people who, who find that these postures don't come quite so naturally to them they will just instantly have a little bit of a dislike towards them but I hope that by practicing with us in the studio and then practicing this at home you'll gain a little bit more of a, a loving relationship with these postures because heart opening or back bending or front body opening postures are there with that quality to open up the heart and so often these postures can be quite representative of giving love, of sharing love with other people. And so even though that's a really, really nice quality, um, it's important that when you're doing lots and lots of back or front body opening postures, back bending postures, that you also take a few moments to kind of counter that, to come into those um, back body opening postures or front forward folding postures, which are more representative of a bit more self love of turning your awareness inwards and drawing your energy inwards. The other thing with backbending postures is that there are parts of our spine which have very natural affinity for backbends. We will have spoken about this in class and I won't talk about it too much here. But just because it's quite important if you, if you didn't quite make it to the studio with us, the back of the neck and the lower back are parts of the spine. There are these secondary curves that are able to move quite a lot. And what we'll notice if we're getting older or even if we're people who are working with injuries is that the places where we most commonly experience back pain is in the neck or the lower back just because they are so mobile. So what's really important is that we learn how to use all of the different parts of our spine evenly in back bending postures and we might have a little dog joining us for this practice as well. Hello. So to begin with as always just come into any comfortable seated posture. I like to sit up on a block and you might want to sit up on some blankets at home but feel free just to place your hands on your thighs close your eyes or soften your gaze take a spacious breath in and a gentle sigh all the way out just do that one more time deep breath in An easy sigh all the way out. Just giving yourself an opportunity to arrive, to let go of anything that might have been happening in the run up to your practice, to anything that's going to be going on after your practice. And just using this awareness on your body, awareness on your breath, to help bring your focus into this moment right here, right now. Trying to work with your three-part breath, feeling the belly, the ribs, and the chest expand. Feeling the belly, the ribs, and the chest draw inwards. And your next inhale, gently flicker your eyes open. If you're sitting on a block, just gently remove it. And exhale, you can place your hands on your knees. And breathing in, press the back of the body forwards into the front. So already we have a gentle back bend or front body opener. Spinal undulations. And on the exhale, start to scoop the tailbone forward, snuggle the front body into the back. And then inhaling, curl the belly, the ribs, and the chest forwards. And exhaling, feel that squeeze from the pelvic floor as you lean back. Last time like this, inhaling, curl your way forwards. Lifting from the base of the spine all the way through the crown of the head. And exhale again, squeezing from the base of the spine, front body melting into the back. Now this time on the inhale, lean over towards the left and come forward. It's like you're sitting in the middle of a peanut butter jar, getting around the edges. And on the exhale, lean towards the right and take it back. And inhaling to the left and forward. Exhaling to the right and back, almost like you were corkscrewing your seat into the floor. And last time, inhaling, left and forwards. And exhale, take it to the right and back. And this time on the inhale, take it right and forwards. 
Pressing the back of the heart into the front and exhale, feel the back of the heart bending in space. Inhale, right and forwards. Exhaling, left and back. Now this time, inhale, pull the belly of the ribs and the chest forward with your arms. The arm bones come alongside the ears. And on the exhale, you'll gently lean back, press into the sitting bones and squeeze from the floor up through the central column of the spine, out through the crown of the head. Just do that once more to wake up your center. You'll inhale, lean forward, stretch the arms up. And on the exhale, lean back, press into the sitting bones and squeeze up through the spine. Now breathing in, come forward. And on the exhale, softly place your hands at the front of the mat, hands under shoulders, knees underneath hips. There's three rounds of cat cow, so breathing in, scoop the tailbone to the ceiling. As the tailbone lifts, feel the low back broaden, kidneys broaden, back of the shoulders broaden, back of the neck long. And exhaling, scoop the tailbone down, feel the pelvic floor drop into the pelvic bowl, the pelvic bowl into the belly, belly to the ribs, ribs to the neck and the front of the head. One more time, inhaling, lift the head and tail, drop the belly. And then exhaling, push firmly to the floor, feel the front of the body squeezing into the back. This time again, inhale, lift the head and tail, drop the tummy. On the exhale, push firmly into the hands, hover the knees, press into the hands, lift the tailbone up high. And exhaling, press the thigh bones back, the shin bones back, anchor the heels. Full breath in, whole body spacious. Full breath out, whole body grounded, the back of the neck relaxes. You know, inhale and tie on the balls of the feet. And exhale, just gently walk or step your feet to your hands. And inhaling, press into your feet, find a little bit of a halfway lift. On the exhale, soften the knees, belly to thighs, fold forwards. Inhale, push firmly into the floor, roll all the way up, Urdhva Hastasana. On the exhale, arms through the centre line and all the way down by your sides, bring your feet to touch. Now, starting to open up the front of the chest, inhale, bend the knees, scoop the tailbone, roll your way up, Utkatasana. Exhale, pull your hands down and towards your heart and feel the front body hug into the back. As you breathe in, pull the belly, the ribs and the chest forwards with cactus arms, draw the arm bones back, squeeze the shoulder blades. And on the exhale, round the spine, give yourself a big hug, create space between the shoulder blades, wrap the arms around the shoulders. Inhaling, curl the back of the spine forwards into the front, draw the arm bones back as the chest puffs forwards. And exhale again, round the spine, wrap the arms around the shoulders. Inhaling, push into the floor, stretch the arms to the ceiling. And if you'd like to, exhale, wrap the wrists out, belly to thighs, the legs don't have to go anywhere straight, and interlace the hands behind you. Take a breath in, ripple the spine a bit longer, squeeze the shoulder blades together, and exhale, release the crown of the head. Now breathing in, push into the feet, halfway lift. Exhale, step your right leg back and lower your right knee down. Breathing in, push into front foot and back knee, scissor the thighs, reach on up, Anjaneyasana. Just as we did in chair pose, exhale, feel the front body knit into the back, the ribs hug the midline. And breathing in, press the belly and the heart forwards as the arms draw back. Now this time as you exhale, bring your hands into fists, like you were closing an elevator around the spine, press the forearms together. And inhaling, Open the palms, draw the arm bones back, puff the chest forwards. Exhale again, hands to fists, squeeze the front body and knit the ribs, dome the upper back. And inhaling, this time the hips can melt, the arms reach up. Now exhale, plant your palms down towards the ground, tuck the back toes, lift the knee, hover the left foot, and step to downward facing dog. So now we're more familiar with these postures after five weeks. So breathing in, lift the balls of the feet, curl forward, spine like the crest of a wave as you curl to plant. And exhale, drop the knees to the ground, hips to heels, child's pose. This is an earth salutation. You'll breathe in, rise up to sit on the heels, bring the palms towards the center of the forehead, lift the chest. And exhale, fold your way back in, child's pose. Breathing in like a little snake, you slither along the floor 
sending the pelvis to the heels, puffing the heart forward, lifting the gaze. And exhale, press into the palms, tuck your toes, send the hips back to heels, stretching the soles of the feet. Inhale, rising up all fours, lift the head, lift the tail, broadening the low back, the back of the kidneys, the back of the ribs, the shoulder blades, the neck. And exhale, push into the palms, downward facing dog. One breath in. And one breath out. Now knowing you can drop to all fours or stay in down dog, you'll inhale, reach the right leg, finding a straight line from arms through spine, through the thigh and the foot. Exhale, lift to the ball of the left foot, right knee in towards the nose, round the spine, shoulders over wrists. And place the right foot forwards, drop the back knee down. Breathing in, push into the floor, roll your way up. And exhale, arms through the center line, hands come to your heart. Now breathing in, you'll gently stretch the arms out, pull the chest forward, arm bones hug back. And exhaling, hands to fists, round the upper back, knit the ribs in. One more time, inhaling. And exhale. Breathing in, arms stretch up towards the ceiling. Exhale, fingertips towards the floor. Step to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, soft and fold. Breathing in, push firmly into your feet. Come all the way up to stand. And exhale, arms to the centre line and down by your sides. Same thing, other side. Inhale, bend the knees, roll on up, Utkatasana. Just the once, exhale, draw the front body into the back, hands to heart. Inhaling, pull the chest forwards, draw the arm bones back. Back of the heart presses into the front and exhaling, round the spine, wrap the arms around the shoulder. Breathing in, melt the hips, the arms reach up. Exhale, hinge of the hips, belly to thighs, interlace the hands behind you. Take one breath in, shoulder blades together. One breath out, belly button to thighs. Inhale, release, halfway lift. Exhale, this time step the left leg back. If you'd like, keep the left knee lifted. You'll inhale, press into the feet, lift the hips, lengthen the spine. And exhale, scoop the tailbone down, roll your way up. Take one inhale, reaching through the arms. And to remember these coronal postures, these warrior two postures, exhale, lean slightly forwards, bring the back heel down, stretch the arms out. Now take a breath in, bend both knees, sweep the arms down, and then push into the feet, straighten the legs, lift through the central column of the spine, flourish out through the arms, and exhale, Keep the back leg straight, but bend the right knee, hold center, and push the arms away. Hold as you breathe in. Soften the shoulders, steady the gaze as you breathe out. Now to create space in the sides of the waist, inhale, flip the palm of the right hand, lean back. Sink deeper into the right knee, exhaling. And breathing in, lift. The left ribs up into the right, get longer from right hip to right fingers. Exhale, circle the hands down towards the floor, roll to the ball of the left foot, downward facing dog. Inhale to the balls of the feet, ripple forwards plank. Exhale, drop the knees, child's pose. Breathing in, come to sit on the heels, palms to the centre of the forehead. And exhale, bow your way, child's pose. Breathing in, ripple your way forwards. Bhujangasana, cobra. And exhale, tuck the toes. Press the hips to heels, stretching out the soles of the feet again. And breathing in, rise to your cow pose, broadening the back, lifting the head, lifting the tail. Exhale, press the floor away, downward facing dog. One breath in, one breath out. Inhale on all fours or in down dog, left leg reaches up. Exhale, lift to the ball of the right foot, shoulders over wrists, left knee to nose, place the foot forwards. 
Now again, maybe the back knee stays lifted. Inhale, press into the feet. Lift the hips, lengthen the spine. Exhale, draw the belly in, drop the tailbone, stack vertebra by vertebra. And inhale, the arms reach up. One, exhale to soften. One, inhale to find space. On the exhale, you can lean slightly forwards to bring the back heel down. Stretch the arms out. Breathing in, bend both knees, sweep down and then straighten the legs, pull up through the central column of the spine, reach through the crown of the head and then exhale, hold center, press the inner thighs and the arms away. One breath in, shoulders over hips. One breath out. Inhaling, flip. The palm of the left hand, lean back, sun warrior. Get long from left hip to left shoulder to fingertips. Easy exhale, the left knee might bend slightly deeper. As you breathe in, pick the right ribs up into the left. Reach the left fingertips. Exhale, cartwheel the hands towards the floor. Roll to the ball of the right foot and softly step to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, soften and fold over the legs. Breathing in, press into the feet, rise all the way up to stand, Urdhva Hastasana. And exhale, arms through the center line and down by your sides. Now we'll start to find a standing balancing pose. As you breathe in, you're going to bend your knees, Utkatasana chair pose. And on the exhale, you'll push firmly into your right foot. Begin to straighten the right leg and squeeze the left heel towards your left sitting bone. So to stretch the left hand down towards your left foot, squeeze the inner thighs together. Now it doesn't matter if you catch the foot or not. As you breathe in, push firmly into that right foot, get longer through the right side, arc the chest to the ceiling. Still squeezing left heel to left hip, exhale, lean forwards. If you can catch the foot, breathing in, press the left shin back, wrap the left ribs forwards. And perhaps on the exhale, you lean a little bit deeper. Each breath out, press the back of the heart forwards. Each exhale, press the left shin back, lean the heart forwards. Take one more breath in. Dancers pose Natara Jasna, and as you exhale, as slowly as you came in, rise on up. And there might have been plenty of wobbles. You fall down and get right back up. Take an inhale, Utkatasana chair pose. Exhale, push firmly into the left foot. Squeeze the right heel towards the right sitting bone. Fix your gaze on something that's not going to move. That'll help your balance. And from there, you can stretch the right hand down to the right foot. Now, breathing and get longer from foot through fingertips. On the exhale, Begin to lean the chest forwards. If you have the foot, you can hold it. Take a breath in, wrap the right ribs forwards. As you exhale, press the right shin back. Each breath in long, each exhale, maybe you sink that little bit deeper. The deeper is where the breath and the focus becomes more clear. It doesn't have to be a big fancy looking shape. Take one more breath in, and on the exhale, slowly come back up, replace the right foot. Matara Jasana, notoriously challenging. Now take a breath in, press into your feet, reach all the way up. And exhale, hinge at your hips, belly to thighs, if you'd like, interlace the hands behind you, fold. Take one more breath in, Ripple the spine further over the thighs and exhale, release the crown of the head that bit deeper as the pinky edge as the hands drop to the floor. Inhale, release, halfway lift. And exhale, step one foot and then the other back to plank. Hold as you breathe in. And exhale, with the knees lifted or lowered, chest forward, elbows in, lower all the way down to your tummy. Now walk the legs slightly further back out of the hips, point the toes, push into the tops of the feet, extend the sitting bones towards the heels, the legs and the hips are active, and then start to bring the elbows underneath the shoulders, the forearms parallel. Now as the feet press down, the tailbone anchors back, press into the forearms, lift the belly and the ribs in, so if anything you feel like you're moving out of a back bend, 
But then as you keep that pressing to the forearms and almost drag the hands or the forearms back and feel the back of the body press into the front. Notice if you're jutting out through the chin or protruding through the front of the neck and just see if you can glide the front of the neck into the back, create more space from the base of your neck to the base of your skull. So this is Sphinx pose. Wherever you are, you're breathing especially into the lower back. Okay, now feel free to stay here. Or I like to bring the palms together, the elbows apart, and stretch the hands back behind you. Let the palms face the floor. And again, if you need to shimmy the legs a bit further out of the hips, feel free. Now initially, lift the shoulder heads away from the floor, squeeze the shoulder blades together. And then go ahead, keep the feet grounded, but lift the chest up off the floor. Now feel free to stay here if this is enough. Again, back of the neck nice and long. Or maybe you begin to lift the legs. Try and squeeze the big toes together, roll the inner thighs to the ceiling. You can stay here, pressing the balls of the feet back, crown of the head and the breastbone forwards. Or maybe if you can, you can interlace the fingers behind you. Try and keep the thumbs lifting away from the hips. Shalabhasana, Locust Pose. Take one more round of breath. And softly release the hands, release the feet, and press your hips back to your heels. An easy child's pose. You can have the knees touching to support the belly or take the knees a bit further apart. Just breathing into the lower back creating space, especially in these sacroiliac joints, so these joints that connect the pelvis to the bottom of the spine. And breathing in, come to sit upon your heels, rolling up, and you can lean over to one side and stretch your legs out in front of you. Now I like to have it so that my heels are fairly close to the end of the mat. And then just bring, again, the soles of the feet to the floor, so learning how to integrate and support the spine. So you can always hold onto the backs of the thighs or have the fingertips to support you. Otherwise, stretch the arms forwards, let the tailbone curl forwards, the belly button draw in, and as slowly as you can, try to keep the feet grounded, release the lower back vertebrae, the vertebrae of the thoracic spine, the spine of the ribs, and then eventually back of the shoulders and the back of the head. And go ahead and place the soles of your feet on the floor and make sure that you can tickle the backs of your heels. So you've played with Sphinx pose, you've played with um, Shalabhasana, Locust pose, and now we're gonna play with bridge pose of Setu Bandhasana. So we'll do a couple of undulations first. So make sure the soles of your feet are anchoring into the floor as you breathe in, actively curl the tailbone to your knees, keep firming the inner thighs together and start to lift the low back, the mid back and the upper back up off the floor. And always hold the sides of your mat if you'd like. As you exhale, lift the balls of the feet, keep the inner thighs squeezing together and roll the upper back, mid back, lower back to the ground, release the heels. Same thing, inhale, press firmly into the feet, curl the tailbone, the low back, mid back, upper back, so you're lifting the vertebrae like you'd lift a pearl necklace off a table, pearl by pearl, and exhale, rise to the balls of the feet, scoop the tailbone to the backs of the knees, and lower, upper back, mid back, lower back, let the heels come on down. Okay, last time to hold, inhale, push firmly from the knees, down the shin bones to the feet, Scoop the tailbone to the back of the knees, roll your way up vertebra by vertebra. And on the exhale, maybe you rock a little bit from side to side, walk the shoulders or the arm bones underneath you interlace your fingers. As you press into your feet, keep stretching the knees and the thighs forwards, keep squeezing the heels towards your shoulders, lift your chest towards your chin, but relax the front of your neck. Notice that the primary muscles that will extend your hips are these gluteal muscles, your bum muscles. Have a little bit of a squeeze there, but not too much. So you're not 
devouring your pants or your trousers or whatever you're wearing between your cheeks. And we'll take one more round of breath. And on an exhale again, rise the balls of the feet, release the arms and lower the upper back, mid back, lower back. Take a moment with the feet wide, let the knees come into touch. And especially between back bends, you're trying not to squeeze the knees immediately into the chest. So if you feel like you need to do that, like an emergency after, you know that it's likely you're pushing slightly too hard. So you're again, just going to a place that feels interesting, that focuses your awareness and not a place that makes you feel like you need to freeze or a place where you can't breathe. And after resting in neutral for a moment, you can draw the left knee to the left armpit, right knee to the right armpit, rock a little bit from side to side, you can wiggle the toes or circle the ankles. You might stay there just anchoring the sitting bones or the lower back towards the floor. Equally, you might start to reach for the pinky edges of the feet, stacking the ankles above the knees. As you press into the hands, with, or as you press into the feet with the hands, you press into the hands with the feet. So there's this kind of little war going on between the arms and the legs. You can rock a little bit from side to side and you continue to lengthen the sacrum down on the floor. I like to place my thumbs between the fourth and the pinky toe to stretch out the soles of the feet. From there, gently draw the knees into your chest. The nicest counter for any big back bends or big forward folds twist. So you'll inhale the right arm open and exhale drop the knees to the left. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Take one gentle inhale and breathing out draw the knees back through center. My hips might hop a little to the left, knees to the right and gaze in the opposite direction of the knees. Just take a round of breath. Find that these postures are here to be restful, so use your intuition to find a reclined twist that feels comfortable, that feels restful. And you can bring the knees through centre, and as always, it's up to you. If you'd like, you can Take a few moments in Shavasana. If you have five, 10 minutes to spare, then absolutely just lay here. And letting the bones be heavy, the muscles melt. The skin soften. And if you're slightly shorter on time, you can bring the knees into your chest. And take a little roll very gently up towards the seat. Again, you might like to sit on a block or a blanket, maybe some pillows. And after this practice, just place the left hand on your heart and hand on top of the left. And as you breathe in, you feel your heart swelling into your hands. And as you exhale, feel your hands melting into the heart space. this gesture of sweetness and loving kindness towards yourself. Three rounds as you breathe in in your mind, you say, I am love. And as you exhale, I am loving. Feeling I am love. And exhaling, I am loving. And just in these few moments that you have to transition from your formal practice on the mat into the rest of your practice, the rest of your life. Take a moment to fill yourself up with as much loving kindness as possible. And as 
until you feel yourself so full, so abundant with it. When you walk in to the rest of your day, you'll have no other option than just to share that sweetness, that compassion, that loving kindness with each of the people that cross your path. And it's worth doing, even if on some days it only lasts a few minutes. Practice, it'll last longer and longer. And softly bring your palms to press in front of your heart, your head bowed towards your hands. And namaste with you. And thank you for practicing online and I look forward to seeing you in person soon.